Welcome to a very chill editing session with me. I've been thinking about making this video for a little bit and I feel like it's only right if I make the video in the spirit of how I actually edit these photos. Today we'll be editing four different photos from my NFL shots. This is from the most recent game that I shot. This is the Bears versus the Lions game. My best game to date, I believe, that I shot. This is just gonna be a chill kind of edit session. How I usually do it is I'll throw on a podcast in the background, maybe throw it in the corner of my screen, watch it, and just kind of go through these photos. The process is going through the photos, sorting through them, pulling the selects, and then I'll rename the selects so that I can send them to the NFL. And then I will edit them for my own socials that I can then post seven days later. Today we're talking how I edit these and when I use presets, when I don't, do I have presets? Will I be releasing presets? What do I do when I'm going through these different panels trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong? So today we have these four photos. We got this one of Jared Goff. And if you saw my photos from before that I posted on my Instagram, uh, these look different because these are unedited, uncropped everything. So here's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. Four different kind of vibes of them four different kind of styles that I'm gonna be doing. And the kind of fascinating thing is that on my USR, just for workflow, whenever I'm in game sending the files, this one is actually a JPEG. The USR is shooting JPEG, so you will see it is harder to edit a JPEG than a RAW. We all know that, but you can kind of have a side-by-side -side comparison of a RAW versus a JPEG. So. Let me set up my microphone so I can use both of my hands to start editing. We'll start with this first shot of Jared Goff. So first thing I usually do whenever I open a photo is I will crop it. And so I'm gonna crop this one in a good amount. Um, kind of feel it out as I go, maybe crop in more, maybe less. I love this nice gradient that you have in the background want to keep a natural composition and um, I see some symmetry here so we have him in the middle players on the left and right probably do something like this center them up a little bit more and maybe a little more headspace so something like that pretty happy with I do have some presets that I will use for these NFL games I've made them throughout the previous games so this one's from the first game that's second game third, fourth, fifth. So this one was actually my uh, Lions game preset. We'll click on that if you just bump the exposure. It gets to a pretty good point. You can see the before, after, before, after. I mean, it's at a good point, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're not here to just use presets. Actually, let's go back so I can get my cropping at least. So right there, we got the crop that we did and let's just go down the line of what I would do. So make some minor adjustments, kind of even things out, brighten it up, maybe lift the shadows a little bit, give some highlights, some whites. Definitely want to drop those blacks, but before we do anything else in the entire photo panel area, I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna so I'm gonna select some different parts of the image. And first thing I'm gonna do is select subject. Whenever I do that, you see it selects all of the players. So I'm gonna select this mask, subtract, brush, and then I am going to brush out the players that aren't Jared Goff. Got that one. Let's brush these two out, make that brush a little bit smaller so that I don't cut out any of Jared Goff. And you can see up here, uh, it's pretty good. You don't see any other white on the left or the right. And then I'm just going to right click on that and do duplicate and invert mask. So now we have him selected and then we also have the background selected. I've gotten asked how I get this soft kind of look in my photos before. And one of the main things is I'll select that background 
and I will drop the clarity. And then I will also dehaze it, which uh, is not very conventional, but I like how it looks. And so then maybe let's bump it up. Let's bump up the exposure. Just mess around with it. I'll probably drop the highlights, but bump the exposure. So I don't know, I, it still gets that soft look, but you don't want things to be blown out. You see like if you crank these whites, this is too blown out. So we'll reset those whites and mess around. Probably crunch the blacks and then bring up the shadows. Have them go back and forth. Really want to get this gradient going down without selecting a gradient. Love the color in the background here. And I'm going to desaturate it a little bit. So we're only doing things to the background right now. We really haven't done anything to the foreground, so let's go to the foreground. This, we are only selecting Jared Goff. So, once again, I don't want anything to be blown out. You see his sleeves are pretty bright. We don't want that, so bump those shadows, drop the highlights. Bring the whites up a little bit, just because I think it brightens everything up in general. And then let's see what we can do with the blacks. Um, I'm going to bring those up and pop exposure a little bit more because I do know that I'm probably going to crunch the shadows or contrast a little bit more um, whenever I adjust the entire image. But other than that, I think we're at a good point with the foreground and background. I actually might darken the background a little bit. I like how it looks. You want him bright in the foreground, dark background, really create that separation. And then let's edit the image as a whole. So maybe soften it just a little bit. I like to pump vibrance, drop saturation, kind of gets a vintagey kind of look. And I feel like it pulls out the more natural colors. Personal preference right there. And let's do a simple little S curve as a starting point. Drop the shadows, bring up the highlights. See, I don't like how high those highlights are, so I'm gonna keep the highlights where they are, mess with those mid-tones. Now the mid-tones, you can get some more detail on his face, which I definitely want. Don't wanna lose the detail on his face. Still got a good amount there. Now constantly just going back and forth with the before and afters. And then we're gonna go to the HSL tabs and probably saturate those blues, bring down those reds, pop the oranges, cause that's skin tones. Maybe mess with those oranges a little bit, brighten up his face. And then I like to desaturate all the colors that aren't on the jersey or him. You see there might be some pink in his jersey. If we just go ahead, desaturate those, I think it looks good. You might lose some detail on the face, but I'm not mad about it. I think creating this kind of coloring where the only colors that really pop are the jersey colors and skin tones really just creates a nice look that people like, including me. So that right there is pretty good for the first one, for the first, so you can kind of go back and forth of my preset versus what I just did. If we brighten that up a little bit, I feel like it'd be very similar to what we just came out with. So separating the background from the foreground, such a big thing here. Second one, this is Justin Fields. So right here, I love this little flare on his helmet, as you see. First things first, let's crop. I wanna crop that referee out for sure. Get up close and personal with him. Get up close, crop this in so we really get that texture in his face. Brighten it up overall here, drop the highlights, pull the shadows, just evening out the photo once again. Now same technique, we're gonna select the subject right here. Um, it selected the lineman, but not this lineman. It also didn't select Justin's lower half. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to add it with the brush very generally. You don't have to be a perfectionist with this as long as you have a soft brush selected. Mm, pretty good there. And then same thing, right click, duplicate and invert mask. Now we have the foreground and the background. I like that this is not selected with him so we can just have the bear's colors pop. Once again, drop that clarity, drop that now let's leave the texture up. Drop that dehaze, that makes it nice. And kind of gray, it just adds that fogginess. I don't know what you even want to call it. 
Pump some contrast, same thing. Let's lift the shadows, drop the blacks. Really liking that look for this, but now I'm liking the dropped shadows. Let's darken that background, really make that nice. Drop this, no, pump those highlights and then add contrast. Really want that contrasted background. Now let's go to Justin. Right now, I think he just looks desaturated. We gotta bring that saturation up and just brighten them up overall. Add some contrast. Let's bring those shadows up just to maintain detail on the face, but drop those blacks. Pull out those nice and deep blues. Bring those whites up. Highlights. Maybe a little bit of clarity just to sharpen them up. A little bit of sharpness on them. Before. After. Before. After. Part of me likes the before more. Weird. All right, well, let's add some more teals. I liked how that before had some teal to it. I don't know why, I just think that looks really nice. So the, the blues are a little bit deep. That's something that I don't really fall into very often, but I, I really like how those blues started out. So I'm going back, let's bring those blues and I'm just gonna brighten up the image as a whole. So now let's go down to the HSL tabs. Brighten that blue, maybe, no, no not too much because I think it does too much to the alignment down here. Brighten up those oranges. Let's add saturation to those oranges and really mess with those blues. I don't know what I'm gonna like more. I like the desaturated, saturate those yellows and once again, desaturate the pinks. And we're really starting to isolate him. I think that purple, Took too much out of the jersey, which kind of shows me that I have too much purple in the jersey. So let's shift those purples to the blues, and right there we're getting that nice deep blue back. There we go, here it comes. This is what I was looking for. So I think that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Um, I don't know. I'm not I'm not super pumped on that, but I think goes good at it overall. Next up, we have this one of Jared Goff. So first things first, I don't want him to be centered in the final photo. I want to use these guys to create a composition, something like this. So we have this guy on the left, guy in the middle, Jared Goff on the right. You got three different layers, which I think is a really nice dynamic kind of look and a, just a great composition overall. As you saw with the cropping, that's not the composition in camera. Cropping's powerful. That's why we have 45 megapixels in these cameras. Same thing, we're going to select the subject. This one, ah, got underneath his arm. Come on. Get the brush. We're gonna deselect that. I think there's a new object to deselect. I just haven't used it a lot. I'm not gonna use it in a tutorial for the first time, trying it. And then we're gonna deselect through the legs. Once again, not being perfect. Doesn't have to be crazy. Making sure that we just don't make any mishaps there. Same thing underneath his arm. Let's go between the legs down here a little bit. So now we got them selected. I want them to be bright and I want the background to be dark. Before we do anything more of the foreground, duplicate and invert that mask once again. Darken that and let's desaturate that background a little bit, I think. Bring those shadows up, crunch those blacks, dehaze, lower that contrast. All right, that clarity drop is nice. Also love the dehaze because it still maintains the darkness in my opinion but that man i just love how it looks with that kind of i guess dehaze but we're doing less of it so now going back to the foreground let's pump some clarity some sharpness just to sharpen that up add some saturation just overall brighten them up make sure that those jerseys are dialed in with their colors it too bright not making it too dark bring the shadows back drop 
the blacks. And I think we're good with the selections so far. Now we wanna go through, we wanna make the different adjustments accordingly. Bring the shadows up, whites up, drop blacks. Need a little dehaze overall, not mad at it. Bring that clarity up. Once again, vibrance up, a little bit of saturation down, really pumping those blues. The HSL tab is going to be a huge one for us today. Let's change those blues so they're a little more natural. Pump a little more luminance into those, mess with our skin tones now. Let's drop those. Saturation, add some of the skin tones, add some of those blues. Let's desaturate those greens and yellows a little bit so I can take some out of the little grass stains down there on his knees. And then once again, drop in all the colors that are kind of irrelevant in this photo so that we can get rid of all the weird tones. And I think we're at a pretty good place here. Pretty happy with the colors. Let's compare once again to the preset. If you click on the preset here, add a little exposure. It's pretty similar. I think it's too cold actually. So we'll go back to our edit. I like our edit more. We could drop the highlights a little bit. Um, I think it's pretty dialed in. If anything, it's just too blue. So maybe we go to that background and we pump some warmth into it. There it is. I like that personally, it separates it more whenever everything's blue, ah, don't like it. So um, we're going to just move on from this one. So this last one, I really like, but it's a JPEG. So you see you lose that detail in his face, but you also don't have all of the sky. It's the annoying part of shooting JPEG, but let's start with the preset here. This is very similar to the edits before. I will scroll down through so you can see what this preset looks like. If you wanna mock that, go ahead. I guess I did decide to go ahead and use the color grading tab here. Don't do that all the time, but let's just bump exposure, bump shadows, bring those blacks back and get it to a good point. And then we are going to do the normal select subject. I like that it selected all three of them. <coughs> and then bump that up, bring the highlights down. Love this look and I think it's gonna be money once we get that classic dehaze. Lower the clarity, pump some contrast. Just kind of crunch that a little so the dehaze isn't too much. And we are good. So I'm gonna go back add some more contrast, maybe bring it down a little bit. I think it got a little too faded in those blues. Add a little bit of saturation in the foreground. Now let's desaturate the background just a little bit. And I think this one's good. You see whenever we edit the JPEG, you lose that sky a little bit, you lose a little bit in the shadows and the darker parts, and the image just isn't as good. That's obviously gonna be like that. That's what we shoot in raw, but whenever we're working fast on the sidelines, it makes more sense to just shoot in JPEG. It's easier for our workflow. So you can still make it work. Having that blown out here, I don't think you lose too much about the image. There's nothing that's crazy dark here where you're like, man, I, I really just can't even use this. Everything's pretty balanced out. Whenever you use your histogram, I think you're gonna be pretty good whenever you're shooting in JPEG, so just be careful, but you'll probably be good if you know how to use your camera correctly. So we'll go back through the four images. We got the first one, we got the second one, third, fourth. That's it, those are the four photos that we are editing today. Definitely a different kind of vibe than the previous videos, but just a chill kind of editing session with me. Nothing too, too crazy. Don't want to get too in depth. Um, maybe I'll drop the presets, maybe I won't. Let me know if you want me to, but I hope this helped a little bit. One of the main tips that I would say is drop that clarity and dehaze of the background. It separates it, it just gives it that hazy look. It's almost like you have a pro mist on a 400 millimeter lens, which there is no chance that is a thing. There's no way you can buy a 
I don't even know what that thread is. That is like a 200 millimeter thread. That'd be insane. But anyways, that's my process. That is my post-production workflow whenever I'm editing these photos. I hope you enjoyed this kind of slower paced video and I will see you in the next video. We got more breakdowns of NFL photos coming soon. Peace.